just south of Salina, near a town known as Wooster. On a lovely small farm lives a rooster named Brewster. He's not just a clucker that you ought to take lightly. He's proud and he's bold and he prances quite sprightly. Folks say he's a rooster of unusual variety, one destined to climb to some high notoriety. But to the farmer's son Paul, he's not a big deal, just another loud chicken in search of a meal. Long about sunrise, each day give or take, out to old Brewster a trip does Paul make. It's one of those chores that he does twice a day, perhaps not his favorite, but he says it's okay. This day would be different, and quite a surprise. This one would really pop open Paul's eyes. He crawled out of bed, though still half asleep. When he got to the birds, he could hear them all peep. They were hungry, it seems, and just couldn't wait for Paul to throw open that small wooden gate. Paul worked his way back to the end of the coop. Last but not least, he threw Brewster a scoop. His fine feathered friend snarfed it right down. No kernels of corn did he leave on the ground. But still he kept pecking that silly old bird. When the dust had all settled, Paul noticed a word. Brewster had scribbled the word rain in the dirt. And as hot as it was, a quick squirt wouldn't hurt. Paul was amazed and threw Brewster more corn. Then another small wonder his rooster performed. With a twitch and a twaddle and then a small tweak, the bird scratched the words next week with his beak. Paul was in shock and not a little be dazed. At Brewster the rooster, he was truly amazed. If this clucker was right, the drought would be broken. But the source of this news could never be spoken. Who would believe him? Who could he tell? Everyone knows that a chicken can't spell. Paul, they would ask, are you feeling all right? Brewster can't speak and you know he can't write. Paul kept to himself for the rest of the day. He told not a soul, not a word did he say. Weatherman Tim on the TV that night told of the drought and its terrible plight. He went on to say that no rain would be falling. Yes, once again, Mom Nature was stalling. Paul couldn't forget what he saw Brewster do. And Weatherman Tim would want to know too. He picked up the phone and he gave it a dial. May I please speak to Tim, he asked with a smile. Weatherman Tim came right to the phone, and the farmer's son Paul drove his point home. Paul told the story of Brewster's great feat, and Weatherman Tim thought it was neat. But Paul, I must tell you, Tim said with all candor, I'd like to come out and take a small gander. Now the next day at noon, the news crew arrived to see if the story of Brewster survived. Paul took him right to him. The rooster was real. But Tim wasn't so sure he'd perform for his meal. Paul threw a few kernels of corn on the ground, and straight to the feast old Brewster did bound. He gobbled them up, and still he kept pecking. Was he writing the words that Paul was expecting? Yes, there it is, Paul screamed with delight. I told you he could, I told you last night. Rain very soon, it was plain as can be, was scratched in the dirt for the news crew to see. Tim's crew from the station stood there dumbfounded, confused and amazed and completely confounded. Was what they had seen just a bunch of dumb luck? Or was Brewster the rooster one mighty smart cluck? Next week came so quickly, the weather still hot. The sun was still burning and rain there was not. The ponds were all dry and so were the creeks. Of Course you'd be dry too with no drink for eight weeks. Tim's competition, those guys across town, were forecasting sun, they weren't backing down. Said weatherman Tim, I've decision to make. What should I do? Which road should I take? Now this weatherman Tim was a popular guy, and if Brewster was right, his ratings would fly. But forecasting rain when the computers say sunny might ruin his name, and that's not too funny. Just then the phone rang. It was Paul at the farm. Yes, Brewster the rooster had pulled the alarm. Rain by tomorrow, he had scratched in the dirt, and Paul was convinced they'd get a big squirt. Tim was excited, but Tim was still sensible. To make a mistake would be indefensible. He thought long and hard, then thought once again. Still he kept thinking till suddenly when. I'll do it, I'll do it, screamed weatherman Tim. I'm forecasting rain, though chances seem slim. So later that night on the tube he did go to forecast some rain and let everyone know. The phones rang a lot. They rang off the wall. Your weatherman's nuts, they said when they called. Much later that night, some storm clouds were forming. It appeared that old Brewster was right with his warning. Not long after that, the rain began falling and falling and falling and falling and falling. 
You know, the next day in the paper, the headlines were huge about weatherman Tim and his stormy deluge. He was the talk of the town, and that's putting it lightly. His weather cast now the whole town would watch nightly. For the next several months, Tim's forecasts were right. He never missed once, not one single night. When he called for some rain, the rain always fell. And the same was all true for wind, snow, and hail. His ratings rose quickly to the top of the heap. But of Brewster the Rooster, there wasn't a peep. Tim was excited, but he knew the whole story. It was Brewster the Rooster who deserved all the glory. Tim would consult his maps, charts, and science. But on Brewster the Rooster, there was total reliance. So imagine Tim's shock when Paul shared the words that his father, the farmer, was selling his birds. Tim asked again, are you sure this is true? What can be done? What can I do? Did I hear you right? He'd be selling his birds. To weatherman Tim, these were startling words. The buyer had spoken and soon they'd be gone. But Tim raised his voice, you gotta hold on. Give me some time, I'll think this thing through. I've got to decide what it is I can do. He worried that day, and the next day as well, and he worried at night when the chickens might sell. Weatherman Tim about drove himself nuts. He needed that rooster, no ifs, ands, or buts. Though Tim knew nothing of chickens or farming, the thought of this loss was very alarming. He got on the phone and he talked to Paul's dad. He wanted those chickens. He wanted them bad. Weatherman Tim and Paul's father, the farmer, got together to talk, and old Tim was a charmer. The father knew nothing of Brewster's great talent, and Tim's chicken pitch seemed rather gallant. So he sold Tim the chickens, the rooster included. Now Brewster is mine, Tim shouted and hooted. It had been a close call, there was no doubt about that. But Brewster was Tim, so he'd stay where he's at. For Brewster the rooster, the red carpets rolled out. That this clucker was special, could there be any doubt? The station constructed a most beautiful facility for their chicken of choice, this bird of nobility. No chicken had lived in a coop quite so beautiful, but not many roosters had been so darn dutiful. Paul kept the big secret, not a soul did he tell, and his rooster was happy, so that's just as well. And weatherman Tim flashed a bright TV grin, because his forecasts were right again and again. Oh, what do you think of that story? Oh, that's a good little story. Brewster the Rainmaker Rooster, made for kids and horses, too. Bye-bye. <laughs>